Welcome to Decide to Transform. You made it to level two. Deeper questions leading to deeper answers. I'm Tomas Garza, and I'm here to help you decide to transform. I'll be setting the pace for the process to support your unfolding. Learn and commit to a practice that brings simplicity and awareness of what is ready to be released. Join me now and allow the experience of a deeper sense of love. Welcome, welcome everyone to Decide to Transform. I am your host, Tomas Garza, and I thank you for joining me here today. We've got a very special show and a very personal show where I have decided to go through some of my own history and things that I've done very wrong and that I've learned from and things that I've done very well so that we can all learn from my own experience. The title of the show today is Transformation 101 love and fear. Now the Transformation 101 piece is going to be a three-part series. So this week, next week on St. Patrick's Day, I'll be live and then also March 24th, we're going to go through three very, very profound and deep concepts. And rather than talk about the concepts for an hour, I'm going to talk about them each for part of the show, maybe 20, 30 minutes, and then share my own personal experience with these ideas and with this concept in the hope that this will resonate with you and that you may see some things that you might choose to change and decide to do differently in your own life. And at the same time, you may see some things that you're doing very well, and this can be incredibly validating. And I always think as someone who has attended a number of seminars and conferences, when I hear speakers, it always helps on both ends to hear not only what you can improve upon and choose to work on, but also what you've done well, because we need that, we need both. We really do need the validation as well as the kick in the pants, so to speak. So uh, you may get both out of today, but for the next three weeks, we're going through the series called Transformation 101. So before we launch into that, let's just recap where we've been, because I've gotten a number of comments from you, the listeners, about the last two weeks of Decide to Transform. and. As you recall, and if you have not heard these yet, these are really, really interesting shows that I've done over the past couple of weeks about seasons in our lives, where I've shared a lot of our own experience, and then by our, I'm referring to my wife, Cindy, and me, our experience over the last two and a half years of selling our house in the United States, traveling largely in Mexico, living in Mexico for the better part of two and a half years, all of those experiences and now coming back to the United States, we're now in Arizona. The concept of seasons has been really, really important to, to me because there's always a lesson to be learned in them. And what has come up for a lot of people are wishes that they could do it too. And my main message as you listen to these shows, the, the dates of these, are the 25th of February and the 3rd of March, in other words, the last two weeks, the number one thing that people have said to me, not just in the last two weeks, but throughout the past two and a half years has been, oh, I gosh, I'm living vicariously through you guys. I wish I could do the same thing as you, uh, if only. Well, and if only nothing, the result of all of this is a conscious choice on our part. We chose to do this and you can do the exact same thing. So anyway, just wanted to briefly recap that we're moving on to Transformation 101 and today we're going to be talking about love and fear, but I encourage you to go back and listen to those shows, especially if you are in a period of transition in your own life. Very, very important. There's a lot of work that you can do if you're in a transitional period and 
Also, having been in multiple transitional periods myself, it always helps to get a little boost, an energy boost, some inspiration from somewhere. <laughs> and I encourage you to go back and see if you can get some of that and glean some of that. But now let's get down to the business of Transformation 101 here. And just to preview this, these concepts are coming from my book. These are directly pulled from chapters two through four of Decide. That is the title of the book that I published last year. And I'm going through them because they're very, very foundational to transformation and personal growth and spiritual growth. And I want to stress that those are all exactly the same. So we are going very deep today. This show is intended, actually they're all intended, but this one in particular, because it's the only one going on right now, it's intended to operate on a spiritual level. And this is Ohm Times Radio. So I hope you're ready and willing to examine yourself at the deepest level today and examine every moment of every day what voice you're listening to. I'll explain more about that in a minute. Transformation, as you've noticed, if you've listened to this show even once, is in the title, Decide to Transform. It is a, an idea and a notion that is very, very important to me as a teacher and as an energy healer, this is what I work with every day. It's transformation of people's lives. And incidentally, I'm not the one transforming other people's lives. The podcast, the healings, all of the teachings, the writing, all of that is a way to serve and to help people to transform themselves because it all, all of it, 100% takes place at the level of the mind. Even if the transformation that you seek is in the physical body, if you seek to get stronger and join a gym, well, you've made a mental decision to get stronger. And you've made a decision to go to the gym and you made a decision to whip out your credit card or cash and pay for your membership. And then every day or several times a week, hopefully more than just once or twice every six months, right? Having whipped out and paid for the membership, you uh, then make a decision to go back every day, every moment of every day. Transformation takes place completely in the mind. So what is the big deal then about love and fear? Because that's the title. So a little bit of background. This may be familiar to you and you may have thought about this often, or it could also be that you've never thought about this at all. In that case, this is going to be very brand new, and I'll distill it all down. There are really only two emotions in human existence. Okay, There are really only two. Everything that we talk about and all of the gradations all boil down to one of two things, love or fear. We subdivide as human beings, and we have a really, really pronounced tendency to classify, and we love to outline and to break things down to their component parts and subdivisions, and then we assign different labels and different gradients to everything, to our entire experience, and, and we classify, and we divide, and we subdivide further. And we can, if we're not careful, complicate our lives way too much with this classification and reclassification and outlining and subdivisions and parts and subparts. It begins to read like a legal text or a statute with multiple parts and subparts, breaking all the way down into little Roman numerals and subdivisions. 
Every emotion that we experience is a manifestation of either love or fear. Happiness is a manifestation of love. For example, joy, lightheartedness, laughter, all manifestations of love. Fear has many manifestations and we call them many names. Anger is one, sadness, grief, a sense of lack, of deprivation, frustration, Everything is a subdivision of one or the other. And the gradients and the terms that we use to describe them, we've all made up. We, we, we made it up. It's about the experience and it's love or it's fear. And here's the thing, and this is very, very quick because I want to do all of this just by way of a quick introduction in 20 to 25 minutes. This is something that people have studied and meditated on and contemplated in various spiritual traditions all over the world for thousands and thousands of years. So if you want to read further on it, you most certainly can. And if you want to read further on it in my own book, it's chapter two. So, and the title is Decide. We're always talking to ourselves. And there's always an internal dialogue going on, whether we know it or not, and whether we actively admit to talking to ourselves or not, there's always something going on inside our head. And it even continues while we sleep, because when we dream, we hear language sometimes, and we talk to ourselves, we see things, we have experiences. Same in waking life. The mind is always going, and sometimes it seems to be going a lot faster than other times, that's for sure. But at the very foundation of it, we're always talking to ourselves, and therefore we're always listening to one of two voices. And which would those be? Well, you got it. One is the voice of love, the other is the voice of fear. Every moment of every day, we are choosing which of those we're going to listen to. And often, all too often in the world, we listen to the voice of fear. We listen to the voice of fear when we watch the news or read the news. If you consume a lot of media, I'm just using this as an example, there's a lot of fear. Because what's on the news? Coronavirus outbreak, stores running out of toilet paper, Walgreens out of hand sanitizer and masks, right? People fighting each other for a roll of toilet paper, that's on the news. Politics, that's on the news. Bombings are on the news, right? World news is full of, unfortunately, atrocities, full of, of war, of high-level negotiations where the futures and the lives of millions of people are being impacted by people on the other side of the planet. All of that's going on, and if you watch too much of it, then it's all fear, fear, fear. And if you consume too much mass media, and again, I'm just using this as an example, you're likely to have a very fearful perspective of life. And whether you call it fearful or not, it's fearful, because if you're angry, it's fearful. If you're angry on a predominant basis, you're afraid of something. It's just that simple. And if you're lighthearted, then you're in the energy of love. So I invite you to consider in your own life which you want to experience, because it's all a choice. And it's a choice to listen to the voice of love because it is there. And there are so many ways that you can access that. And I've talked about several of them on this show and I'll talk about them again in the future. And meditation, as, as you may know, I am a meditator and a meditation instructor. That is just one of the ways and it's one of the ways that I've chosen to go deep and to learn to listen to the voice of love 
instead of the voice of fear and to feel good moment to moment in my life and to be happy. And there are just so many ways that you can do this. Physical exercise is one. Taking a walk in the fresh air is one. Picking up yoga is one. If you have a pool at home or near you, going for a nice swim is one. Many, many ways of self-care, and self-care is listening to the voice of love. So whatever that looks like for you, there are so many, but the choice is love or fear. And when we listen to fear, we get stressed out. This is how mass stress happens. It's how people get to running around in an absolute tizzy, uncomfortable, frustrated, and afraid. And fear keeps us stuck. It keeps us stuck. This is what keeps us glued to the couch. It's what keeps us from seeking the career that we want. It's what keeps us from feeling that we deserve to have a loving relationship, if that speaks to you. It doesn't make any difference what area of your life you're primarily focused on because this is universal and that applies across the board. Are you listening to the voice of love? Or are you listening to the voice of fear? Fear keeps you stuck and love impels creation. It impels movement and extension because you enhance it by giving it away. You enhance it by getting into a more loving, a more happy, a more joyful state and then sharing it with other people in whatever form that may take for you knowing that that will vary completely. Love is shared and you find that you cannot hold it back. So one illuminates and one quite literally destroys. And we have a choice every moment. So on the other side of the break here, we will come back and we will talk about the choice that we all have. And I will get into some stories of my own. So stick around here. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back here on Decide to Transform. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Home Times Radio. IOM FM. Own Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, I'm Tomas Garza, author of Decide and host of Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio. I want to ask you, if you want something in life, have you decided on it? If not, you'll listen to a limiting story about yourself. You will say you can't, you're too old, too young, etc. Decide to transform in life. Learn what you can choose to believe instead of your limiting stories. Decide. Available now in paperback and ebook. Did you know that you have the power to change anything in your life? Did you know you can do so even with the things that you've already decided are impossible to change? Come join me, Venus Castleberg, on Outside the Impossible as I interview people from around the globe that have literally changed the things they thought were impossible to change just by using the amazing tools of Access Consciousness. Now airing Wednesdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Do you dare to believe that anything really is possible? Opiates has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed pain pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, 
I'm all for it. I just wish I would have had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONDCP. Welcome back to Decide to Transform. I'm Tomas Garza, and I thank you for joining me here today, live on Ohm Times Radio. We are going through love and fear as Transformation 101, as a foundational concept. And before the break, we looked at the reality, the reality that we have a choice every moment of every day. And we're either listening to the voice of love or we're either listening to the voice of fear and every other emotion that comes up, such as happiness, joy, lightheartedness, on the other end of the spectrum, frustration, anger, lack, depression, all of that stems from love or fear. And we have a choice every moment of every day. And that's where we are. That's what we're talking about because love eliminates and fear tears down and destroys. And it starts moment to moment. It is literally impossible for us to effect large scale change if we haven't made the changes in our own mind. Transformation is entirely of the mind and it is an inside job 100%. And again, before the break, I talked about someone that goes to join a gym and get healthy. Well, that's a decision that is made before the first hit class is taken, right? Before the person pays for a membership. It's a decision and it all starts with that of the mind. So which voice are you listening to? And I invite you to consider that because all of us, every single one of us has chosen fear multiple times in this lifetime. Too many indeed to count. It's just a fact, but rather than be depressed by that fact, because when we think about it, it's something that people can tend to look at and think, oh my gosh, that's sad. That's really, really sad. I have botched this and I've messed this up and I've made these mistakes and okay. Okay, so, so you have, we all have. What we have right now, right now, this moment is the opportunity to choose again. This is what mindfulness is, as is being aware in the present moment that you can do things differently. It's the recognition that you can choose again. You can choose differently. If you have chosen the path of stuckness and discomfort, you can choose love. You can choose to get unstuck. You can choose positive transformation. And it all starts one moment at a time. And I always invite you to consider what you can do right now, because we cannot, unfortunately, snap our fingers and have the, the absolute life of our dreams in less than one second. And if you want to retire to the south of France with millions of dollars a week in income and have a beautiful partner and a fulfilled life, if that's your dream, it's not going to happen in one snap of the fingers. However, right now, you can make decisions that will lead you toward that. And this applies to any anything in life. So if you've chosen poorly in the past, join the club. And choose again right now. Choose something different. And then the next moment, choose that good thing again. Choose love again and again as many times as you can and must to create momentum in the other direction. It's a beautiful thing. So rather than think about what you've done wrong in the past, just realize we all have, and you can listen to some of the stories that I'm about to tell you, and you may resonate with that, and you may think I was ridiculous. Well, I kind of was, but I'll explain. <laughs> you may relate to some of this, and know that you can choose yet again. So as far as full transparency goes, I have shared some of these stories in one form or another on this radio show in the past. 
In fact, the very second show that I did on December 3rd happened to fall on the anniversary of a catastrophic auto accident that nearly killed me and that changed my life completely. As a result of that, one domino after another began to fall in positive transformation. So I do share about that, but here's where I was. I want to put this in context, these stories of someone that was listening to fear. And I'm talking about myself here. Um, this is not a podium from which I'm going to preach that I've done all of this and look at me, right? Um, if you see in me or you feel in me someone that is energized, someone that is calm and centered and focused and certain, it speaks from a position of experience and authority, it's because I've done the hard work. It's because I've fallen down millions and millions of times and made ridiculous errors millions and millions of times. And while I cannot save you from making ridiculous errors on your own, you can certainly save yourself. So take all of these stories and take what applies to you in your life. So I listened to fear in the career aspect and the job aspect of my life, almost all of my adult life, honestly, until very, very recently. For 13 years, I worked in mediation, in high stakes mediation as a family mediator. And if you're not familiar with that, what that often involves are disputes between parents. Um, if someone is going through a divorce or a legal separation and they have children in most U.S. states, and I'm referring specifically actually to the state of Oregon where I used to live and where I practiced, people have to come up with a plan, obviously, for the kids when they split up. If they have children, someone's got to have custody of the children or that's joint. And there has to be a parenting time arrangement where the children spend a certain amount of time with each parent. And as you might imagine, these are not pleasant walk in the park, laughter filled discussions. This is high stakes mediation. A lot of it is court ordered. And this is what I did for 13 years. And all of the gray hair that you can find on my website and on my profile pictures on social media, all of that is not the result of being 48 years old, I like to say, but the result of all of that work that I did, because this is very much a matter of putting yourself in a place where people are not at their best. And my clients, of course, most of them, almost all of them were one and are wonderful people going through a really stressful situation. And it does not bring out the best in anybody. So why did I stay in this um, when I'm on the other end of it? I have not practiced mediation for over six years now. So now that I'm on the other end of it, it's easy to talk about, but it wasn't so easy to talk about then. And I stayed in it because I was listening to the voice of fear in my head. And I will explain to you how I did that. This all to me felt familiar. Conflict felt familiar. I experienced it often growing up as a child. I knew what family conflict looked like. Um, I was, yeah, my parents were, were divorced, so I knew what that looked like. And even while they did a, a very good job under the circumstances of co-parenting and sharing resources between my, sis, my younger sister and me, uh, they did that. It's not easy for people to do that. And while they did, there were still a lot of fights. There's still a lot of strife. My mother's second marriage was full of anger and bitterness and fighting and trial separations. And, um, you know, she has passed. She's been, uh, she passed away about three and a half years ago. And uh, that I certainly feel safe talking about this to a worldwide audience. 
because it just is what it is. Now, you may have had something similar to this. If you grew up with a lot of conflict and, and fighting, and you grew up always on the defensive, what happens is as an adult, you carry that with you, and we tend to reenact what feels and smells, indeed, familiar. We end up seeking in romantic partnerships what feels familiar to us. So if it was abuse, you get more of the same. If you learn certain things and get instilled certain things as a child about jobs and about what you can and cannot do in the world and what's considered worthy, then you tend to gravitate toward that in adulthood. So for me, it was a law degree, which um, I finished in 1998, and then a 13-year career in alternative dispute resolution as a mediator. And I hated it. So why did I stay? Well, number one, money. <laughs> and that was based on the sense of lack of what do I do if I quit? I want to quit. For years, I wanted to quit, but I was afraid to lose the income source. Maybe you're stuck in a job that you don't enjoy or a career that you would love to transition out of, but you're experiencing that. I experienced that the whole time. I'm listening to the voice of fear in the sense of lack, of fear of not having enough. And then the fear of the unknown also creeps in, as in, okay, well, if I quit this and leave this steady career behind, because it was steady, people are always suing for divorce, aren't they? It was a very steady referral stream. What am I going to do if I don't have that? It's that voice that, what am I going to do if, oh my gosh, the future? Well, the future's not here. We're choosing to have this discussion with ourselves in the present moment, and we can choose to reframe that. I listened to that voice of what's going to happen right? What's going to happen in the future? I listened to that for years and years, rather than a more calm, rather than a more loving and positive voice in my head. And I have to tell you all something. I had some horrid cases, and I cannot, obviously, for reasons of confidentiality, even years after the fact, share all of the details with you. But when people are stressed out, they do bizarre things, things that we would not ordinarily consider because it's crazy. It's crazy. It's way off the mark. And why we wonder why people would say the things that they say under extreme stress or do the things that they would do under extreme stress. And I heard for hours a day, people talking about, he said, she said, so-and-so did this, so-and-so did that. And usually it was childish behavior, arguments that people get scolded for having on the playground when you're six. We're told to share, we're told to treat people nicely. My first grade teacher always said, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. And that really hit home with me. And when we're stressed out, all that goes out the window. It just all disappears. So I would listen to this for hours a day. And one horrid case would pile upon another horrid case, which increased my desire to get out. It made me want to leave that much more. And that gave rise to both the voice of love and the voice of fear. Now, the voice of love said, okay, you can do this. You can transition out. You have all of these skills. You speak several languages fluently. You can workshop. You can lead workshops. You can teach. I was on a graduate faculty at the time um, as a university professor so um, and undergraduate. So you can teach. You can lead workshops. You can facilitate you have all of these skills, you can do this. 
And then the voice of fear would kick in of what are you going to do? How are you going to do that? It's going to take a long time. Does this ring a bell with anybody? Are you going through this right now? Asking yourself how long it's going to take and not knowing and wanting to stay put and supposedly comfortable, even though the comfort zone is not comfortable. This is an example in my own life of how for years I said, well, okay, I've got the steady stream of clients coming in. My contract always renews every year. Nobody ever gave me a hard time about that. And if I just sit here and do more of the same, well, I'll continue to get paid. I'll continue to be able to afford my house payment. Okay, great. But at what cost? And as one nasty case piled upon another nasty case, both of those voices began to come into my head, but I found myself still listening to the voice of fear. Now, the auto accident that I talk about on the December 3rd show was the real catalyst. What happens, and I want everybody to be aware of this, what happens if we don't listen to the voice of love and transformation? Because I equate the two. If we don't listen to that, the universe has ways of getting our attention. And let's just leave it at that. It can produce really nasty circumstances and abruptly blow you out of one state of mind and into the next. And that's what getting T-boned at 55 miles an hour will do for you. Waking up in the hospital, learning to walk again. I share all of that detail on that particular show. Again, the date's December 3rd, so you can go back and listen to that if you're curious or if you've ever been through something like this. That's what got me to quit mediation. And unfortunately, I wasn't done at that point listening to the voice of fear. I had a clean slate, but whether you have a clean slate or not, you're still looking at a moment-to-moment -moment choice between love or fear. So we're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, I will tell you what happened from there in the hope that this resonates with you listening today. We'll be right back here on Decide to Transform. Stick around. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Hi, I'm Tomas Garza, host of Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio. Thank you for listening. You know, there's only so much we can cover on a one-hour show. If you'd like to hear further from me, I happily offer personalized teachings. Get your very own voice recording or book a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Ask a burning question and gain clarity on achieving massive transformation in your life. Details available on my website. TomasGarza.com My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. I am Fidel Mshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family, and then, boom! Everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee, 
and they resettle you to America, and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org, brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back to Decide to Transform. I'm Tomas Garza. And in this last segment of the show here, we've got a continuation of my personal story of how I listened to the voice of fear instead of the voice of love and how I suffered from that. And I will tell you about how I began to, and eventually did, turn that around, thankfully. Thankfully. I'll tell you about that. And we also have a couple of questions from listeners. And this is something that's very, very fun and special to me. I love to read your questions on the show, live on the show. And this gives you the opportunity not only to get some of my feedback and have me speak to something that's a burning question to you, but it also gives, not only do you get answers, you also get the the benefit of sharing this with many, many, many people all over the world. Because there is always someone out there that has the same question as you, that is experiencing something very similar, if not the same, then very, very similar to you, and they may be suffering from the same types of anxieties and frustrations, and they may wonder the exact same thing. And by your asking, then you give relief and a welcome boost to people all over the world. So that is a side benefit that we don't ordinarily think of when we ask a podcast host a question. But I really want to point that out because we've had some excellent, excellent questions here on the show. So how do you do that? Well, I'll explain a little bit more in a few minutes, but you can always send me a private message if we're connected on Facebook or send me an email and I will give you the link in a few minutes. But I want to come back to the story of listening to the voice of fear and how in my own life I made countless mistakes and was able to turn that around. If you're just joining us before the break, I talked about my 13 year career as a very high stakes divorce and custody mediator and how the intensity and the animosity of the cases led me to want to quit. And for years I refused to do so because I was listening to the voice of, well, you're going to lose your income. What are you going to do? It's going to take a long time to do something else and you don't know what else you want to do. So just tough it out. Just tough it out, I told myself that, to my own detriment for years and years. Now, once I had the auto accident on December 3rd, 2013, I wound up quitting mediation, but I wasn't done listening to the voice of fear. I left mediation because I had a blank slate. I couldn't service my clients from the hospital, and I was on very heavy pain medication, by the way. So, Unable to perform my duties anymore, I took advantage of the blank slate that they offered me. When they transferred all of my cases to my colleagues, I got to leave. I did that, but I wasn't done. What happened was the what's next. The what are you going to do now from the universe and not the voice of, okay, you have all of this opportunity here. You have these skills. These are the things that you love to do and list them because I did have a list of those. Instead, there's also the voice of fear of what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Oh my God, what are you going to do? And I know, I know that People can relate to that. This is one of the reasons why we stay and keep ourselves stuck in relationships that we don't want to be in, in jobs that we don't want to be in because we're listening to this voice of, I'm terrified of what's going to happen next because I don't know. And it's the unknown. So I listened to that for at least another six months after I had quit serving as a mediator. And where did I end up? Well, Full disclosure, 
on antidepressants because I realized that I had been depressed the entire time I was doing mediation. Now, I was still practicing meditation the entire time. I was still doing lots of personal growth, but I had not done enough to recognize that I really needed to get out. And it's easy to say on the back end of it, well, the time wasn't right, and it wasn't. But when the time was right, I wound up still listening to the voice of fear of what am I going to do now? I don't know. And that led me down a really, really dark hole. I know some of you can relate to this. So this is most definitely a plug that it is okay if you recognize that you may be depressed. It is okay to seek help. I could have done that years earlier because, as I mentioned, I had a very, very conflict-filled childhood and learned some habitual patterns that may have served me at the time to sequester myself and to go within and go deep and, and hide myself away from conflict and drama, which is the way I chose, by the way, to, to deal with that, was to go internal rather than external and combative, which has never been my, my MO. So this is where these patterns come from, is you come to realize sometimes in adulthood that once you take the plunge and seek help that you have been experiencing this for years. So I went on some medication for a little while and I'm off it now. It was just temporary, but it was a huge, huge monumental decision for me to recognize, okay, this is what's going on. I need to seek help. I need to look outside myself because of myself, I can't find the answer. Now that should sound very spiritual to you. If it does, that's exactly how it works. This is just an example in someone's life. It happens to be my own, but you may relate to this. We don't have the answers ourselves. If we try to find the answers ourselves, we're going to get frustrated. We're going to run around like a hamster in a wheel that just keeps running and spinning and spinning and spinning. It's the literal hamster wheel if we try to do it all ourselves. Now, if we practice spirituality and ask for help from a higher power, you may call this God, you may call this your higher self, source, the universe. Right? Divine intelligence, higher intelligence. The little self, the ego self that I'll talk about, by the way, in our show next week. I also talk about this in my book, Decide. This is something that should be familiar to a lot of you if you've practiced Eastern spirituality or if you have done yoga, anything like that. The ego is, is a concept that comes up a lot, and that's our little sense of a separated self that seems to exist independently of everyone else. In other words, I, the other little separated selves. And we try to find the answers in that little self, and we, we can't. We simply can't. We have to go broader and bigger than that. And that is one of the core tenets of spirituality, universal spirituality worldwide, is broadening that. In this case, this week on the show, we're listening to the voice of love. And I finally did that after I had gotten help from my depression and gone on the medication, which lifted me pretty, pretty quickly, actually, right away. And I quickly realized that I didn't, I wasn't going to need that forever. So there was no fear of, oh gosh, I'm going to be on this the rest of my life. Well, if, if people are, they are, and I know people that are, and they're glad that they are. <laughs> so everybody's situation is completely different. I was only on it for a short time, but when I did, things began to lift and that gave me, that is what I needed at the time to give me a sense of, of lightening. And this is a sense of lightening that I now provide for people as an energy healer on a professional level. And I, I really could have used that myself at the time. This was several years ago, 
But the message here is it's okay to seek help. And even if you are in a professional position, it's okay to be human. Really, this is one of my main messages today. If you are a professional, if you have a certain degree, certain experience, we often tend to think that we should be invulnerable. But that's not the case. That's not the case because each one of us has our own internal work to do. And this is one of the reasons why I share this part of my story with you on the show today is so you might become inspired by that and you might just realize, okay, it's okay to seek help. Now that could be seeking help from another person. It could be seeking help from, um, from God, the universe, a higher power in the, your spiritual life. Whatever this looks like, it's okay to do. And that's one of my main messages. The other is every moment of every day, we have a choice between love and fear and which do we choose? So as, as you might be thinking, listening to this, there's a lot more that this guy hasn't said. Well, of course that's true, but we only have one hour at a time on the radio show. So I invite you to stick around for the next several weeks, months, years, and keep listening to the show because I'll go deeper and deeper and deeper, but one hour at a time. And we only have a few minutes left. I want to read a listener question here. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, I love to get your feedback and get questions from you, the listeners, that I love to read on the air, because not only do you benefit yourself in getting the answer, you also benefit everyone that's going to listen to this podcast worldwide. And not just live, by the way. That's one of the beauties of this format, is that people can listen to it anytime, anywhere. By the end of the day today, this will be available anywhere you listen to podcasts. So this question is from Jody from Washington, D.C., and it's really hard-hitting, and it's really good. So in the time that remains to us, let's go through it. Jody asks, how do you overcome the fear of what someone might be thinking of you as you say it? In other words, how do you overcome the fear of what someone might be thinking about you or judgment that they may be passing about you as you put yourself out there? Let's say, for example, on social media, say on Facebook, whether it's live or in posts or a combination of the two, let's say you're announcing something. Maybe you are beginning to start a business, build a business or a creative project or publish a book, and you're putting yourself out there. How do you overcome the fear of what someone may be thinking of you? Well. For some of you, this could be a very, very pronounced fear and even debilitating up to a point. So if you can resonate with this, here's my thought. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. And the reason I say that is because in reality, we have a choice between love or fear. But fear is, as we find, not not real. We choose to make it real. And till we make a decision to bust through it. And then we discover that we what we were afraid of wasn't real in the first place. We made it real to ourselves and concrete and big and scary. But in the end, it was just something that we had to move through and it passes. And in the act of taking the plunge, so to speak, we realize, okay, Wow, I feel lighter already. So do it anyway. If it's sharing on social media about a new business venture, share it anyway. Because what's going to happen? What's the worst that could happen? Someone might disapprove of you and your message. Well, if this is something that represents what you consider to be your true calling and the next step in your life, what you need to be doing right now, and you have some energy and passion for it, then say it anyway. And if somebody 
judges you or thinks that you're crazy. And in my case, uh, if they think that I'm one of these crazy spiritual guys and, and woo-woo and all of that, okay, fine, let them think that. And I, I know some of you listening can relate to this because this is Om Times Radio and conscious programming. So, you know, I know that a number of you are very, very interested in your own spiritual lives and development. Say it anyway. Because if somebody disapproves of you and unfriends you, so be it. Next, if they disapprove of your message and they start to withdraw themselves from you, then allow yourself to think that, okay, they're just not ready for my message and I'm going to do what I need to do anyway and I'm going to let this person go. So. This is my number one suggestion for overcoming the fear of what people may be thinking of you is whatever you're afraid of doing, do it anyway. And Jody, thank you so much for sending this question in. Questions are best sent via email. And that's Tomas at TomasGarza.com. There is no H in this. This is the Spanish variety. And I hope you've enjoyed our broadcast today. Join me next week. 10 Pacific, 1 Eastern for Decide to Transform, and have a great week, guys. We'll talk to you next week.